speaking now with, um, I guess we can call you the co-sponsor of tonight's event. Yes. Can you tell me um, who you are? Yes, I'm Dr. Brenda Green, and I am executive director of the Center for Black Literature and chair of the English department at Maker Everest College and a professor of English. Right. And so tonight is really all about you guys. Yeah, this is this is really exciting. Uh, the synchronicity of having this exhibit on on the photographs exhibited at the same time as the movie came out was just really, really perfect timing. And of course, to have this um, on the birthday of Martin Luther King is really, really important. So we really, really were excited when the president of the New York Historical Society asked us to asked if we would like to co-sponsor this and I said definitely it was really really perfect and it fits in with the theme of what we do at the Center for Black Literature is making the public more aware of the contributions of blacks throughout the diaspora and just raising the consciousness of, of people and it's as I said it's also a, a fundraiser um, for the center so it, it really really touched um, it touched me deeply. Uh, one of the things I did in preparation for this was to go, of course, and make sure I saw the film, yes. Selma. Yeah. So seeing the film and then seeing these photographs, it was it was really, really inspiring. And I, I had to, when I was watching the film, I had to really be in control. But I think that Stephen, uh, the, the photographer, did an excellent job of just capturing certain moments and capturing the the tension that you saw on people, capturing the anxiety, capturing the passion, um, just displaying all parts of what this was. Looking at how the state troopers responded, looking at how the people responded, and and this this exhibit of having all of these people, it it just sends chills. Mm -hmm. Having all these people come together. And, it, and of course, across racial and ethnic lines. And it, it just real makes you realize how important it is to continue this work and to uphold this legacy. And one of the things, this becomes another part of the backstory, you know, behind um, what that movement was about. I'm and glad you mentioned that. Of course, because you're a professor of English, you would think of story and narrative. And one of the questions I spoke with the photographer, Stephen Summerstein, about was how do, you, how do you look at all this and weave all this now 50 years later into a story? And he said that it was, there were differences from when he shot it, of course, 50 years ago and now, now. And so I wondered um, if uh, you could talk a little bit about just looking out here at some of these photographs, uh, one or two that you can maybe talk about. I guess one of the, the photographs that hit me and um, is, is what we, how much we still have to do to change um, perception and attitude. Um, because one of the things that, that hit me when I saw the film was how the legacy of, of racism and um, prejudice still continues, and we still have so much work to do. And we can't talk about living in a post-racial society because we do live in a society that's constructed by race. And there's still people who have those attitudes. Now, I would like to know what those people who were in this, um, yeah. in this exhibit, what they're thinking now. What is their attitude now? And um, so that, that was one of the ones that struck me. And of course, this, this magnificent uh, photo of seeing the vast range of people who came together to march. It just, like I said, it just sent chills. Um, it sent chills. And of course, seeing Martin Luther King um, and um, John Lewis. Um, I looked at John Lewis and I looked at said it was such an, an accurate representation of him. I just find it just really, really inspiring and and motivating and, and a reminder of how we have to continue to do the work to ensure that the work that people in the civil rights movement did 
is not forgotten, that we build on it, we have that responsibility. We have that responsibility as citizens of the world. We have that responsibility as educators. We have that responsibility as, as parents. Um, we, we have that responsibility in terms of the general public. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do it, there's no one else who can. And Martin Luther King and, and the work that the people did and, and the, the courage that they had um, is, is a reminder of the fact that nothing comes without struggle. Mm -hmm. The struggle continues and we should not fear that. We should embrace that because your persistence is what changes things. Mm -hmm. How do we affect change? So the challenge when I look at an exhibit like this is how do I get young people to understand the significance and the value and the importance of this? How do we get them to understand what, what legacy was left and what they must do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as you're talking, I'm thinking too that these photographs can be some part of that legacy and perhaps the center that you oversee uh, is something. What's coming up with the center? Okay, so we have a couple of things coming up this month of continuing the importance of recognizing our heroes and sheroes and we're doing a program on Lanston Hughes oh. um, who you know, as a writer, um, was not only concerned about telling our narrative and stories, but telling them in a way that is very authentic, um, authentic representations of people of color. And he made sure that he lived a life, you know. He was not the writer who sat there in an ivy tower and wrote. So we have his new book is coming out on letters um, from Lanston Hughes. And then we're very excited at the end of the month, on February 25th, we're doing a program um, with Herb Boyd and Gloria J uh, Brown Marshall, which looks, um, there's the Third World Press, which is the oldest independent black press in, in the country, edited the letters of Malcolm X. So the, that book came out recently, and Herb Boyd and Gloria Brown Marshall are going to be talking about it. That's at Megar Evers on February 25th. And then we're very excited because, you know, this is a year of, I mean, we, we always are a part of a struggle. But when you talk about resistance and liberation, we decided as a result of our last conference that we needed to have a day where we had activists and writers and scholars talk about what we can do around the issues of resistance and social justice. And so we decided that our National Black Writers Symposium, which is held every other year over one day, would be devoted to that. And so our theme for our symposium on March 28th is Voices of Liberation and Resistance. And we decided that in, in tribute to that, in recognition of that, that we would honor um, Danny Glover, who has, um, I think, been underestimated in terms of the impact he's had in effecting change and looking at the kinds of work he's been doing internationally, globally. yes, globally, internationally, and then also looking at even being selective in terms of the roles he portrays in, in film and literature. We want to pay tribute to him. I think as a people, as a culture, as a nation, that we don't do enough to take care of those who have paved the way and we don't do enough to honor them and take care of them and we have to do a lot more of that so we're looking forward to honoring him and we're going to have some other very conscious writers be part of that uh Tainisi Coates is going to be part of that Jacqueline Woodson who just wrote her her autobiography yes. telling her story we know a little bit about yeah. her yes Askia Torre yes you know, yeah. a long time um, activist, Sapphire, who's done oh, something yeah. in terms of, yeah. of resistance. Um, a woman, Kevin Powell, has been invited. Uh, Jamal Joseph, former yeah. Black Panther. So we're, we're going to look at bringing together an intergenerational group of writers and scholars and artists to talk about where we are now, 
and what we can do and, and to a, educate. Exactly. And that's a beautiful uh, s setting for us here as you look behind me and Dr. Green, uh, you see this amazing image of what can happen when you do exactly the kinds of things Dr. Green is talking about, resistance, knowledge, coming together across ethnic lines, across religious lines, and all the rest of those lines. And this is the powerful image that I would like you to be left with.